I'm so happy now because I'm in Tokyo and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day and I've decided to take you along with me and show you a day in my life in Japan, so to speak. I know many of you would love to visit Japan, see cherry blossoms. Stay at the Ryokan traditional Japanese hotel, ride the Shinkansen bullet train and eat ramen, soba noodles and tonkatsu all day long, which is what I've been doing, eating non-stop. And to be able to afford all this, coming to Japan, staying in a hotel for a whole month, you need to have the kind of freedom that comes from intentionally creating income sources that are location free, which I did. I always wanted to get up in the morning and do the things that I love, travel whenever I want to and not have to report to a boss. My rental properties, my dividend ETFs and my digital assets, they all generate an income that allows me to afford to travel like this. Let me take you on a little hotel room tour. See my lovely hotel? It's really lovely and it's very cute. The design is modern and cozy. It's also very tiny as hotel rooms go in Tokyo. I filmed it with a wide angle camera, but in reality, it's so tiny that there's not much of a closet. The closet is so small that I can only hang my coat in it and that's it. And I actually have to keep my stuff in the suitcase. That's why Japanese people travel with small suitcases. In fact, everything in Japan is small. The houses, the cars, and even the people. And that's because Tokyo has a population of 40 million people in the larger Tokyo metropolitan. In fact, it's so crowded that the Japanese government is offering money for people to leave. And for those of you who are wondering why I don't rent an Airbnb while I'm in Tokyo, it's because I'm done with Airbnb. I stayed in Airbnb for years and some of them were lovely, but others were a horror story. Broken beds, uh, sketchy neighborhoods, key lock boxes that were a struggle to open, hair in the bathroom and Airbnb hosts that acted as if they're doing me a favor. So when I come off a 13 and a half hour flight from London to Tokyo, I want to know that I'm arriving at a clean room and that there's someone at the front desk that can solve problems if anything goes wrong. I also don't like to pay for cleaning when I'm the one who's doing the cleaning. So I think that the whole Airbnb thing is done because there's no quality control and you can't trust the experience you're getting from them. Surprisingly, the price of a hotel room and an Airbnb is pretty similar. And in the hotel, I get my room cleaned every day. I get fresh towels and bottles of water daily. And I think that in a way, this is the future of living. The hotel industry should step into that space and offer longer term stays with the flexibility of moving in and out whenever you want. And you don't have to take care of maintenance, taxes, and other nuisances. Now, the reason that I visit Japan every year, besides the fact that it's the most fascinating country that I've ever been to, is that my daughter chose to live here. She's been living in Tokyo for the past four years. She's a student at a Japanese university and she has a Japanese partner. And I bet you guys have kids who live in other countries too. 
and you need a solution that gives you a place to stay. So drop me a comment below if you found other solutions for extended stays when you're visiting your kids. And I think it's something that we don't take into account when we raise our kids and we try to be a role model for them, teaching them to think for themselves and to have critical thinking skills. And then they grow up and they start looking at the world with the thinking tools that you model to them. And then one day they come up to you and they tell you that they've decided to live in another country and it's the best place in the world for them. And I have to say that in the case of my daughter, I totally get it. Japan is a great place to live in. It's ranked as the 10th safest country in the world. It's very safe to ride the subway at night. If you drop your purse, or leave it on the subway, you will find it at the subway office or at the police station the next day because people here are so honest that they will turn it over. And the Japanese government takes care of first-time home buyers by giving them a 35-year mortgage at a very low interest rate of between 1.3% and 2.5%, even today as interest rates rise in the rest of the world, which is basically like free money. And for people with low income who can't afford to buy a house, there are all kinds of housing projects. Perhaps that's why you hardly see any homeless people in Japan. And a recent study found that there are only 4,000 homeless people here in Japan out of a population of 122 million people. So you ask yourself, if Japan can take care of its homeless people, why can't the big America do the same for its people that are living on the street? How difficult could it be? Anyway, I guess it starts with the education system where Japanese kids are in charge of cleaning their own classroom and other parts of the school for 30 minutes every day. Maybe that's why it's one of the cleanest countries in the world in spite of the fact that you can't find any garbage bins in public areas. People just carry their trash with them until they get home. And because it's such a safe country, kids as young as six years old commute to school by themselves on the subway without their parents, which teaches them to be responsible for themselves and to be independent at a very young age. And this focus on values and morals and not just on academic goals raises kids who are more considerate of others, less individualistic, and also have better teamwork skills. And you see the results in the way Japan is operating. The subway in Tokyo is always on time. No one litters on the subway. It's so clean that even if a baby drops its toy on the floor, the mom just picks it up and gives it back to them. And no one talks on the phone on the subway, so you can enjoy your peace and quiet. I'm not saying that Japan is perfect in any way. It has its drawbacks for sure. Earthquakes happen very frequently and you get this emergency alert notification on your iPhone like every other day. Like this one I got this morning when I was at the gym. It was a magnitude of five on the scale, but the center was a hundred kilometers from Tokyo. Many people are lonely, living by themselves, eating by themselves. People are overworked and although there are new laws that limit the number of hours that an employee can work, the expectations from the younger generation that enters the workforce is to work like 80 hours a week. But Japan is a very pleasant place to live for many reasons. 
One of them is the health system, which is very affordable and you don't have to wait for months to get your medical tests. Tokyo is a very safe place at all hours. There is no violence, which is more than you can say for many Western countries right now, where you feel like everything is falling apart. Like many other people, I was brought up and indoctrinated with the belief that I need to find a job and work until I can officially retire. And you don't really consider the idea of moving to another country where you might be treated better. People tend to put too much focus on making money and buying things. And for me, I entered my minimalism era since I'm in my late 40s. I realized that feeling safe is more important to me than making money. With many things that you buy, like a larger house or a designer handbag, you realize afterwards that they actually own you instead of you owning them. In the case of designer bags or clothes, you feel the need to wear them as much as possible to justify the cost. And it's always at the back of your mind weighing on you. With a large house, you need to maintain it, to renovate the kitchen or the bathroom every few years. And it continues to cost you time and energy, which are the most valuable things that you have. And of course, it depends on the phase that you are in life. When I was raising kids, I wanted some sort of stability so it made sense to live in one place. But now that my kids have left the house, instead of being bored to death and depressed and having a midlife crisis, I choose to go on adventures and reinvent my life, like many other creative people do. I'm not the only one. And I think that people don't put enough focus on living and spending their money in a meaningful way, like exploring the world while we still have the energy and the strength to do it. Like spending time with our kids, creating experiences, traveling together, making memories. Today we were in the countryside in a ski town called Furiazawa doing a little hiking in the snow up the mountain to visit the shrine. We saw a sign warning us about Asian black bears, which apparently are very common in this forest. And the sign suggested we make a noise so we don't accidentally bump into them. The climb up the hill took about an hour and it was surprisingly hot. And then suddenly we saw what we thought was a bear, which was very scary. I nearly dropped the camera, but it turned out it wasn't a bear after all. It was a kind of a very large and very gentle antelope. And after that, the only animal we saw was Snoopy. We grabbed a quick lunch at the soba noodle restaurant right across from the shrine. This is hot soba noodles with bone broth and tiny mochi, which are very sticky rice cakes. Mochi is absolutely delicious, but it's also the cause of a few deaths every year here in Japan because people, especially the older ones, are choking on the sticky texture. So eating mochi is the Japanese version of living on the edge. Life is short, we live only once, and we need to have fun. That's what we do at our age. We need to take life by the horns because life doesn't come with a warranty. But in order to do that, we need to take care of ourselves financially and have a positive money mindset. So go watch my other video, seven things that you need to stop doing over 50. And I will see you again very soon. Take care.